his truck was jumping. You know how like a little dog when they get when they're trying to get after something they pounce. That's what his truck is doing, backward backing up. <laughs> I think his his clutch is in pounce mode. Guys, you ever been rolling through the truck stop and you see something like this? You're like, yep, I got a spot. I got a spot. Oh, there's a trailer. Only, only to get around, see some shit like this. Don't do that. Well, part of us undid, I'm trying to figure out a way that I can leave my trailer and this door open so we can lock it back up and they can come back in here and get whatever they need out of here. But the problem is this door, this side right here, we're shy about a, maybe, maybe an inch. So we're gonna see if we can get some, uh, get some two by fours and I'm just gonna back the trailer up on it because this is all they need for right now. This this spot right now. And it's Saturday. I think they're going to get the rest of it off. So, yep. Good times, good times. Hey, guys. Inside the Salt Palace. This place is huge. Huge. But this is the room they're about to put a convention in for the Melaleuca, Melaleuca company. I think old guy said there's gonna be over 6,000 people in this event. Whew. Anyway, guys, let's see if we can't get on back to the truck stop. I am dropping my trailer, so I got, I don't know, about 10 days. 10 days, so I'm gonna get a reset. And then, come back, or, well, then I'm gonna go do, do some power only. And I uh, don't know where I'm going to end up. But, guys, if you ain't ever been to the Salt Palace here in Salt Lake City, this is it. Came through that gate. Got a north gate and a south gate. Depending on which one of these doors you come into, it depends on what gate you need to come into. You got a, these set of docks, the south side, you come into the north gate. That way you can south side it. As you see, there's not, not a ton of room out there. The other docks down there are facing this way. So if you come in that side, well... <sighs> you got a blind side, but it's slanted, so it ain't no big deal. Something else we had to get creative. You see down there, the uh, blocks of wood. <laughs> yeah, blocks of wood under the under the trailer. That way we can get this high enough, so it's all locked up. Half the load's still in there for uh, Saturday, and uh, that way they can open the doors. Otherwise, it wasn't going to get over that lip, that little lip right there. So we are. Oh, guys, who said you need to do flatbed to get in shape? Do some show work. <laughs> I'm dying over here. Setting everything up, getting everything situated. In and out of the truck. All that stuff back there. Had to lock up the trailer. I need one of those. And one of them. So, yeah. Got sides chalked, other sides chalked. And I think we're going to get on out of here. Oh man, I'm, I'm ready for a break now. This is heavy work. Yeah, downtown Salt, Salt Lake City. It's easy getting in and out too. Come on, I'll, I'll take you out with me. All right guys, let's get on out of this little Salt Palace. Let's get on out of here. I'm gonna go find me a truck stop. I don't know if I'm gonna go to Sight Brothers or go on down to uh, Tooley and park it. TA and uh, that's where I parked last night. I went to, uh, there's no parking around here that I know of, so I went 20 miles past my location so I could park at the uh, at the TA down there. Because I know there's always parking, so it's a win. Win, win. Now let's get on out of here. It don't look like I got a lot to get out of this damn joint, so I guess I'm just going to go when traffic allows me to.
downtown Salt Lake, this is where the, uh, this is it. And it's not that crazy. Traffic's not bad. They do have some one lane, so you be mindful of that. Just get me a room, stay down here. One of these nice little town suites. I'm too cheap for that though, because uh, my bed and my truck sleep damn good. show is the Melaleuca. I can't spell it. I put it on the screen. Um, uh, health and uh, products and stuff like that. Big. It seems to me like a uh, like a network marketing company. And this is a big event for them. And nobody, like I said earlier, he said that uh, it's supposed to be 6,000 attendees. And uh, I've been to one of those big conventions before. There's about 8,000. And man, that's a big that's a big show. That's a lot of money. Lots and lots of money to make that, make that happen. Not only that, lots and lots of money for them to put it on. Because the one I went to has $700 tickets, over 8,000 people there. I mean, you do the math, it don't take you no time to figure out. That's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And I'm sure it costs a lot to put the show on as well. But, you know, still they're making a ton of money just from the convention and the show. And anyway, it was a good time. I'd like to do it again. So, if anybody's in the Melaleuca program, uh, I just delivered the first truck of, uh, I think, five, six more trucks are coming in. Um, I was the number one truck. And they, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, now let's go see some power, find some power only. And uh, I'm not going to sit around for a week find some power only and go make some more money but uh i'm gonna go and cut this one because the interstate's right up here to the right so i took you out it's easy to get in easy to get out of the salt palace uh guys uh be back in just a minute guys you have been rolling through the truck stop and you see something like this you're like yep i got a spot i got a spot oh there's a trailer only, only to get around, see some shit like this. Don't do this. Now, I promise you I'm not an asshole. <laughs> That's not my trailer. But I have been part beside it for the last couple of days and I've had a little, quite a few people pull up right here in front of me and look at me like, what the hell are you doing, dude? I'm like, uh, I need a sign that says, not my trailer. But we are uh, right here in, uh, I think it's Tuelli. Tuella, Tuelli. TA. So we're about to go on the other side of this mountain and go over to Salt Lake City. Catch you on the road. Ooh. Hey guys. Well, I've been here since Wednesday. Delivered my load Wednesday. And I've been chilling. Today is Sunday. Which reminds me it's mother's day so happy mother's day to all you mothers out there reminds me i need to call my mother and uh talk to her but yeah i've been sitting here at this ta just been uh doing really much of nothing so i think i'm gonna go into salt lake and uh there's a restaurant i like to eat at over there so i think i'm gonna go go have some of it and quite possibly i'll probably just drive back over here maybe I like, I like it over here. It's nice and cool and it ain't too hot. I sit around with the windows down. So, look at this car. You just, yeah, just jump on out there in front of me. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Welcome to Utah, I guess. Well, but guys, I've been here looking for loads. I see a lot of loads I like and I want, but I'll pass on them. I'm 
looking for something to go towards. Ooh, look at the mountains up there. That snow up there. I'm wanting something going towards um, Washington. So I'm gonna see if I can't find me a power only load to Washington, and uh, I got to be back Friday, and uh, or I got to be back before the 15th to load back up and uh, go back down to Florida, and then we're gonna go home. But uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole at the truck stops. So. Let me get to where I'm going. I gotta call my mama, tell her happy Mother's Day, and we will talk to you then. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are back and we're sitting here at one of my favorite truck stops in the whole country. It's the South Brothers here in uh, Salt Lake City. Uh, for one, the showers are among the best. And today was the first time I've ever got a shower here. And I was uh, kind, of, kind of blown away. I mean, a lot of these truck stops need to step their game up. But this truck stop, they got they got a dentist in the in the truck stop. They got a chiropractor. They got a, a, a regular doctor for like DOTs and physicals. Um, in the restaurant, the restaurant's what brought, brought, what brought me over here, because I was parked over in Lake City, uh, Tuelli, tu, Tuelli or Tuella, um, at the TA, and I got to thinking back before I bought this truck when I was still at Roadrunner. I remember eating here a couple times, and I was like, I'm going over to South Brothers. So it still does not disappoint. Everything on the menu is amazing, and uh, the waitresses in there, uh, they're like, they're like the old school waitresses. They, they they pick on you, give you a hard time, especially if you go in uh, a couple consecutive days. Uh, they get to know you, and then they start picking on you. But let me take show you guys. I mean, it is springtime, down near summertime, and let me show you guys this. Oh, oh, I'm parked over in a bobtail lot. But looky, looky up in there. Y'all see those mountains? Oh yeah. Good, 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 good view. You might be able to see through that windshield. I came through the snow in those mountains the other day. And, uh, well, I need a truck wash now. So I think tomorrow, before you got board, board sitting here, I think I'm going to go back to Lake Point tomorrow. And uh, I think before I go, I'm going to go and get a truck wash. I'm definitely going to get a truck wash before I head back back east, back down to Florida. But been sitting here um, since I dropped off at the convention show over at Salt Palace. I was wanting to uh, get out here and, and do some power only work and be honest with you guys, I, I just didn't feel it. I didn't see anything that I liked. I mean, there's plenty of loads going up to Portland, plenty of loads going to Seattle, a lot of power only going down to LA. And even I thought going to LA, it's kind of risky um, since I straight popped this old girl. But I think I'd be all right because I still got a lot of friends. I've talked to a couple friends that's out there all the time. They're, they still tell you there's a lot of pre-emission engines out there, and I'm not pre-emission, so they're probably going to look less at me. Oh, I'm getting glasses off. Uh, I finally went and got glasses, guys. Uh, still got near 20-20 vision, but up close, this sucks. So I got me some old man bifocals. Um, they're, it's got a small prescription for out there, out in the distance, everything that does look a lot clearer. But up close, I can just, you know, without messing up my eyes anymore, messing with readers. Um, but anyway, yeah, got me some glasses. And I got the Lacoste. And to me, they're kind of flimsy. I think that's $600 a waste. Because, uh, yeah, they, they seem cheap. But anyway, um, yeah, before I get into the rest of this video, talking about don't be an asshole, um, how many times have you been rolling down through the parking lot looking for a place to park? And you run across what I showed you in the beginning. Uh, but before we talk about that, let me show you guys something. I had a company reach out to me, I don't know, a few months ago. It's a cooler. And I thought, I don't really care about a cooler. But they wanted to send me one um, for free to do a review on. And I got to looking at their website. And I found a cooler that I really liked. And it's not just a cooler. It's a dual zone refrigerator. It's got a freezer slash refrigerator in it. And it's kind of like a... It's not like the, the fridge, freezers, the fridges that you usually get going to, to the trucks. 
it's more like uh, like a Coleman style or igloo. And I've got my igloo right here, the same one I've had since 2014. And for some reason, it just keeps on ticking. I mean, I, it must be Energizer battery in that igloo. But uh, that's that's all I've ever used. And I've never been interested in getting anything different because I didn't really need it. And you get the price in some of those refrigerators with a freezer in it. They're too big, they're too bulky, they pull too much power, and they're expensive. So I got to look at this company, it's called Isco. And I ran across a certain model. They wanted to send me a model I think is like a Go 20 or Go 12. And I looked at model Go 20 and it's a dual zone. It's a freezer slash refrigerator. Not only that, it's got a compressor in it. It comes with a five year compressor warranty and a one year general warranty. So I thought, that's pretty cool. The, I still, I'm still not impressed, right? So I say, send it to me. Let, me. let me check it out. And I kid you not, two and a half weeks ago, two, two and a half weeks ago, I got it in the truck and um, I put two Mountain Dews in there and I forgot about them till just now. That's why I'm making this video. I, I crunk up the temperature and run it down to about 32 degrees and see how fast it got there. And it got there in probably about 15, 20 minutes. And I was like, cool, all right. So I turned it off because, you know, I was at home. I turned it off and I was rearranging my truck a minute ago, cleaning stuff up, you know. And I opened the cooler up and I seen those two Mountain Dews down in there. And I was like, oh shit, I forgot about those. I picked them up and they were still refrigerator cold. Now this thing had no power on it in a good two, two and a half weeks. And they're still cold. I mean, what the hell? Anyway, let me show you guys this. I'll take you back to the, take you back to the suite. Yeah, right, I had to clean up a little bit back here. Uh, let's turn you around here. Ooh, I had to clean up a little bit back here with the carbon stuff. There's my, my coat, regular old Coleman. Or uh, igloo, I'm, I should say. Keep it right there. Uh, get some light back here. I can help out. The rest of the stuff. Uh, it's a packed house back here, guys. Packed house. Packed house. Could use a... I could use an 86-inch sleeper. That'd be nice. But here it is. See? It's... Don't take up much room at all. At all. And I've got it set for 50 degrees, 53. Simply because I've got a salad. And I've got some uh, other things in here. And those two Mountain Dews. You know, and this is, I can't, I don't know if you can see that or not. But it's got, right now it's its one zone. You got this little thing right here. It's a little divider. It goes, it goes right there. And you got a freezer and then you got a fridge for your drinks. Freezer, fridge. Pretty freaking cool. The best thing about it is it only pulls at 50 watts. Pulls at 50 watts. Now, let me unplug this thing and I'll put it up on the bed and show it to you. Alright guys, here we are. Um, I don't know the exact size of this. I'd say probably a foot and a half by about a little over two foot long. And the room you have in it, well, you know, there's a standard salad. Um, let's take that out. Let's take the salad out. Put the little, the, the dual zone, whatever they call this little thing, the divider. And once you take that out, it's a one zone. You can be either a freezer or a fridge. I'm going to show you right here. Now I've already unplugged it. <laughs> you put this in there, and voila. You got a freezer and you got a fridge. Freezer, fridge, it's not that big, not that bulky. I mean, it sits down here in the floor. Uh, don't take up a lot of room at all. But I got this out because I just wanted to put my salad and stuff in here and show you guys Osco. And if you see right here, it's got a little scanner thing. Uh, it's actually got an app. Let me get back to the front and hook this thing back up. I'll tell you all about it. All right, well, let's get back up here in front. Oh, check out the view. Check out the view and from the sleeper. I need to set me up a camera mount back here so I can make videos from back here. From behind all the controls of the large car. I think that'd be pretty cool. And get you back in place. But yeah, there is a there's an app. And of course the wife's calling me, so let me talk to her. I'll be right back. So as you've seen, there is a uh there's an app you can get and connect to the cooler and you can set all the stuff on the app. I mean it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I, I really hadn't been much of a fan. I get my get my drink. I hadn't really been much of a fan of the the freezers, the all that stuff, because I hadn't really needed it. But, but more importantly, I never found one that 
didn't take up a lot of space. And you've seen, it's much smaller than my Igloo. Now, it won't hold as much stuff as my Igloo. And that's why I still got my Igloo for all my drinks. And I just got that right there. I figured I'd try it out because I can't get rid of the Igloo until I know that the ice code will do and fulfill the job that I've had the Igloo doing for, well, since 2014. But anyway, after, after reviewing this thing for the last couple weeks and playing around with it and freezing stuff and, and, and it's, it's a game changer especially if you, if you want to eat on the truck now I'm thinking about jerking this passenger side seat out making me a little shelf over here kind of like a little mini kitchen um, and that way I can just start carrying you know ground beef and steaks and fish and stuff and start fixing my own stuff on the truck but I need more space in this little micro truck I'm in so this right here has got to go but anyway enough about the freezer fridge combo um, I highly suggest it around 400 bucks 380 three I mean they're not that expensive compared to some of them on the market and the five-year compressor warranty and the one-year general warranty uh, is pretty awesome and knowing that over weeks my drinks were still cold when I opened them and y'all don't hate on me I did get a cherry coke today but I will put a link in the description so if you're looking for one or been looking for one I would suggest this one and this guy His truck was jumping, you know, like a little dog when they get when they're trying to get after something they pounce. That's what his truck is doing, backward, backing up. <laughs> I think he's his clutch is in pounce mode. But anyways, guys, yeah, have you ever been cruising through the truck stop and you roll it up on that spot and you see that you see that bobtail sitting beside a drop trailer? Now I sit over there for three, maybe four days, and I'm sitting here in the truck. I'm listening to an audio book. I'm doing paperwork. Matter of fact. I finally done something I hadn't done since I formed my authority. I created and made my own trip report for my IFTA reporting. Yeah, all right. Uh, talk about a slacker. I've been using Roadrunner trip reports since I formed my authority in 2017, but I finally, I was like, all right, let, let me make my own. So I got on pages on the MacBook and made my own. But uh, I kept watching people drive by and it, they just look at me like I was a big asshole. And I'm like, yeah, it's not my trailer, buddy. I was waiting on somebody to come up here and do this right here. And be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And I was just going to look at them and be like, that's cute and all, but that's not my trailer. And see what kind of look they get on their face when they realize they just showed their ass. Uh, but I get it, man. I look like an asshole sitting there. Matter of fact, one night, there's a guy jumped out. I heard somebody talking. And I raised my blind and I looked under. And this guy holding his phone looking at me in the trailer. Now, I don't know if it's somebody that recognized the truck and uh, didn't want to bother me because, you know, it wasn't night. Or it was somebody talking shit on another social media outfit or YouTube or somewhere. But if you do see that, be sure to comment that wasn't his trailer, dumbass. Uh, or if you if he if he wasn't trashing me and he just recognized me, uh, let him know that I was watching him. I was watching him. Uh, yeah, I was stalking him. But anyways, guys, I did feel like an asshole. I even thought about moving a couple times. I was like, no, you know, this is a drop trailer. It's if anybody says anything, I have to let them know it's not my trailer. But anyway, I thought it was pretty funny watching people ride by thinking I was a big old asshole. And trust me, I don't do stuff like that. Because people who do stuff like that are just asshats. I mean, don't be an asshat. Anyways, guys, I'm still sitting here in Salt Lake. Uh, I got a few more days until the show's over with. And I need to call my wife back. And uh, so I go ahead and end this video. Um, I promise, guys, the, 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 the Keys of the Kingdoms, all the Nugget videos are coming up. I've uh, been writing. I've actually shot it once, and I looked at it, and I didn't really like it, so I'm, I scrapped it, and I got a new gameplay, so I will be putting that video together here soon, um, just a little more in-depth than I anticipated. So, anyways, guys, if you're still hanging around, give me a big old thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'll put videos out on regular all things trucking. And guys, until the next video, see you, bye. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answered a no, man, I still go. Go, go.